Starship 20 is being put through the gauntlet as SpaceX awaits the green light to go orbital. Elon and Jif continue to shoot across each other's bows. Cargo Dragon returns from the space station, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Saturday, Booster 4 was removed from the orbital launch mount to make way for the incoming attachment of the launch tower arms, or at least the mounting mechanism for said arms, which will ultimately be used to catch the booster upon landing, as well as provide a friendly reach around for a job well done. Red rocket, red rocket. <laughs> Last weekend, both sea level and Raptor vac thrust simulators were installed under Starship 20 in preparation for stress testing which began on Monday evening with cryoproofing of the tanks, including the header tank at the nose, which knocked off a few tiles during venting. Elon seems to be entertaining the idea of overlapping scales of metal sheets with an insulator between them and the primary structure of the rocket as a means of protection during re-entry. It would be pretty cool to see a starship with dragon scales, so long as they cover the heart. On Wednesday night, SN20 was once again filled with cryogenics and given a rigorous, yet respectful, ramming up her skirt. Not sure if she enjoyed it, but Elon had a good time. More tests are to come, possibly as soon as tonight. Keep in mind, not only does SpaceX have plenty to do prior to the actual orbital launch, but even if they were ready, the FAA is not. The agency is still doing an environmental assessment of the area and just sent out emails informing us that public comments have been extended from mid-October to November 1st. So still looking more and more likely that 2021 won't be the year we see a booster lift off from the pad. But still, SN21 is on deck which has begun stacking in the mid-bay. Its nose cone was also sprinkled with heat shield tiles this week, and its booster, number five, is still being built in the high bay. SpaceX was one of four companies to be awarded by the Space Forces SPEC program. They received 14.4 million for combustion stability analysis and testing of Starship's Raptor engines. The other three companies each received 24.3 million for their next generation rockets, which of course is substantially more than what SpaceX got because SpaceX has a habit of outbidding the competition to save we the taxpayers money. Elon spoke at this year's code conference and it didn't take long for the host to ask him about his feelings for GIF. I, th if he, I, I think he should put more uh, of his energy into uh, getting to orbit uh, than lawsuits. Blue Origin responded to this interview by sending The Verge an unsolicited 13-page PDF of SpaceX's legal documents against them. I don't know, did Jeff forget that he owns the Washington Post? I mean, it's forgivable being the world's second richest man and all. The world's first richest man clapped back that SpaceX sues to be allowed to compete. Blue Origin is suing to stop competition and that Jeff has a tiny space penetrator. Well, um, if you are only going to doing suborbital, then your rocket can be sort of shorter, shorter yes. <laughs> it is like a weak ejaculation. Okay. Uh, 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 Jeff. Okay. Musk also explained why he, unlike Jeff and Richard, has yet to go to space. Uh, but my goal is not to set myself up. My goal is to uh, open up space for humanity and ultimately set us on a path to becoming a space-bearing civilization and a multi-planet species. The Cargo Dragon capsule for CRS-23 that launched the space station on August 29th undocked from the ISS on Thursday morning and splashed down under shoots bra in the Atlantic later that night. And NASA announced the date for their next Crew Dragon mission. Crew 3 is targeting Saturday, October 30th at a disgusting 2.43 in the morning local time for liftoff. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> On September 27th, ULA launched their Atlas V rocket, carrying the next satellite in a series of missions dating back to 1972 to provide consistent data about the changing land cover and land use with our planet, Landsat 9. Obviously lifting off out of Vandenberg, in case you hadn't guessed, the Centaur second stage released the payload into a sun-synchronous orbit about an hour and 20 minutes later. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. And a very special thank you to all of you supporting on Patreon and YouTube's join feature. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.